paper covers rock to lose a buckwheat rock. Welcome, bras, bras, and buddies, <laughs> <laughs> to our latest Nugger You film review. It's your boy, Jay Hunter, and join us ever with V1, sir. What's the fucking crack? How are you doing, mate? G- oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you did make me watch things. <laughs> yeah, so what have we got for you? It's not on Netflix, not on Amazon, not on Disney+. Plus. You can find it in a DVD bargain basement bin. It is Biodome with Polly Shore from 1996. Just FYI, this is like one of Greg's absolute favorite films. <laughs> My brother Greg. That's the most Greg thing I've ever heard. <laughs> now, Greg's guy, he coined uh, Rubbish Ronnie Garbage. Fudge Fingers and Toads do. Yes, for the Brain Busters. Big Bum Begalo. <laughs> His favorite wrestler was uh, Big Daddy V. <laughs> He still asks me for updates on Big Daddy V. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> A long time now. <laughs> but what's he up to? What's, what's that? Uh, this along with Gold Member. <sighs> also known as the strongest of the Austin Powers movies. <laughs> uh, it's just also, what's your favorite bit out of Gold Member? And it was Fred Savage is in it and his game because he has a mole and he's like a good mole morning to you uh, mull, uh, that, uh, that's it <laughs> yes yeah, nice to mull you meet you nice to meet you mole don't say mole stop I said mole stop thank you so much for choosing this mega bra Jake Seeline yeah so let's get to it Stony individual. Cause I'm the weasel. Totally Polly. Uh. <laughs> Who is Polly Shore? Paul Montgomery Shore? PMS for short. Uh, <laughs> He's from the Pretty Mean Sisters. Yes. Ivory and um, Jacqueline. And meet my boy. Meet. Sean Stasiak. Son of Sammy and Mitzi, his dad was a comedian, his mom owned the comedy store in West Hollywood, so he's always going to go into show business. Became an MTV VJ in 1989. His gimmick is being this like abrasive 90s dude, brah, and he was named the Weasel, the Weasel, and I was like, holy shit, this is the 90s that you've repressed? Yes. Because you know? yeah. you've got good 90s with Bill and Ted, and now we got the bad 90s. Let me be on chilling with the weasel body. <laughs> no problem. Oh. Polly Shore gained notoriety and started getting acting gigs out of it. So he was in Married with Children, 1989. Then his big break was, or his. <laughs> Encino Man. Hey, Wait, where's the worm? The worm's right there, I see. Uh-uh, I'm a weasel. <laughs> Encino Man, that was a modest hit in 92. That was the peak of Polly Shore's career. So it led to more work, but each film grossed less than the last. So we got Son-in-Law in 93, In the Army Now in 94, Jury Duty in 95, and now Biodome in 96. So we're- Fuck me kind of watching the tail spin of his career <laughs> more on that after the review just so we can delay talking about biodome for a bit longer uh, what is biodome a reference to because no one picks this idea out of thin air aha biosphere 2 in 1991 eight researchers were sealed inside a futuristic glass complex near oracle arizona to spend two years living in a self-sustaining habitat. Biosphere 2, which is an actual, artificial, materially closed ecological system out in Oracle, Arizona. Okay. It's named Biosphere 2 because Earth itself is Biosphere 1, like a gigantic enclosed system. Biosphere 2 is an Earth science research facility completed in 1991, 3.14 acres in size and the largest closed system ever created. It was to gain knowledge for potential future space colonization by having an enclosed area where humans can work and farm, study and live. The biosphere was made of seven different biome areas. Okay, So you had a rainforest, 
an ocean with a coral reef, a mangrove, which I had to look up. It's shrubs. It's just where they grow men. <laughs> uh, wetlands. Yeah. <laughs> a savanna grassland, fog desert, two anthropomorphic biomes. That's where you kind of see the effect of human activity. And the main one for humans to live, farm and test. The structure used glass space frame with solar panels on top and extensive piping and all the tech underneath. There were two tests done from 91 to 93 and then for seven months, March to September in 94. Biosphere 2 failed as a human habitat, but in the mid-1990s was transformed into a research facility. Ooh, the results of it. Mostly problematic, low oxygen, dying plants and animals and the crew inside going stir crazy and a lot of political jostling outside. But they did learn a lot. The crew were physically healthier. Well, they kind of didn't have access to garbage. They had to eat what was in there. And the second one saw total food sufficiency and didn't need extra oxygen. So, yeah. Okay. The University of Arizona took full ownership of it in 2011 and are still doing experiments in it today. Like the lunar greenhouse, trying to work out water purification via plant transpiration. That's where the water moves up through the xylem. Oh, do you remember? How's your insert <laughs> biology theory? <laughs> biology, And it yeah. comes out on the surface via diffusion. Uh, how to grow veggies on the moon or Mars. So even if we can't do it today, like I love how these problems and solutions are incorporated into science fiction, you know, movies and video games set in the future. Absolutely. Like in Dead Space, we have the hydroponics deck. Yes. Uh, where they grow all the vegetables. And of course, there's kind of veggie monsters that come and you have to go dismember them. Yeah. Slicey. Slicey. So the last Biosphere experiment finished in September 94 would have been big news when this film was being written in 95 and released in January 96. So why not grab Polly Shore and Stephen Baldwin, <laughs> who is not Eric Barron, make a 90s doucher comedy around it? With a 4.5 on IMDb and a- Bollocks. <laughs> yes. And well, fuck off people. And 4% fresh from critics on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Can we cork it? Negatory. Act 1, curtain up. The film announces its decade with the 90s Dude Bra song, A Directional by 4th Grade Nothing. Uh, why do punk singers sound like they have a cold? <laughs> How do you mean? They have that kind of nasally voice, like... Da, 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 da. <laughs> and they sound like they have a cold. <laughs> That's a generous <laughs> assumption. Uh, yeah, Wacky's 90s Pomo on-screen graphics. You got kind of upside-down monkeys, that kind of thing. Welcome to Biodome. Congratulations, Biodome 5, and good luck. Cold open news broadcast gets us up to speed. Oh my god, it's Bill and Ted's University! <laughs> <laughs> From Bogus Journey, of course. Biodome is a scientific experiment to see if human life can be sustainable in a closed environment. It's a large plant-filled terrarium, I guess. Plant life has been cultivating for years to get it in perfect homeostasis. They keep using that word, not convinced they know what it means. Yeah. And now a group of five scientists will live there isolated for a year, no bad. Taxis. <laughs> no taxis. Nothing can possibly go wrong. <laughs> uh, possibly go wrong. <laughs> and finally, our protagonists. Holy shit, the heat. Still the position. Because uh, I'm king and you're the peasant. <laughs> I win, you lose. Okay, you ready? Copy that, squirrel of control. Stop it! I immediately wanted to turn this movie off and I like looked at the timer and I was like, ah, oh, there's like an hour and 28 minutes left. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Not even a movie. <laughs> yeah. Paper covers rock. You lose, Buckwheat. Sorry. You're going to have to assume the position. Because I'm the king and you're the peasant. <laughs> oh. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The positive of it is that at least they tell you exactly what the film's like. 
Yes. Like, Beavis and Butthead are very much a product of their time, right? Mm -hmm. And there are times where they might annoy you, but they're also funny, likable, and you don't want to kill them. (laughs) But these cunts, it was immediate heat. Yeah, they're abrasive and obnoxious. Like, I love Beavis and Butthead. I think they're quite funny. This is... Oh, wow. Like, no. No. (laughs) Straight for the remote. Also, do we know how old these guys are meant to be? (gasps) They look like (laughs) dudes in their fucking 30s. I had to look this up. Uh, Actually, I was waiting for your man Stephen Baldwin starts doing the... (laughs) How old are you, mate? Biodome was released January 12th, 1996. Polly Shore, he's almost 28. Stephen Baldwin, almost 30. Okay, that's actually younger than they look. (laughs) And they just look so out of place. Yeah, because they're supposed to be junior college students from Tucson. So, you know, 18, 19, 27 and 29. God. Even if they added it to the plot that these two are just such idiots that they keep on failing, the state of these cunts. (laughs) Grape smugglers. Early 90s idiot dickbags Stubby and Squirrely, aka Bud, Polly Shore, and Doyle, Stephen Baldwin. That's the white douche with dreads. They intentionally concussed Doyle so they can get out of picking up trash with their girlfriends on Earth Day. Their girlfriends? Yes, Monique and Jen. Uh, Monique's the blonde one played by Joey Adams, and black haired one is Teresa Hill. You little dick! Ah! Way to cramp my butt! The wasters try to weasel out of it. And it's like, you're thinking too globally. Think locally. <laughs> I, I, that is a decent yeah. line. And your one's like, oh, you bailed on Hands Across America. And he's like, I had arthritis. It's like, oh, that's, that's, fuck, that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it ends, mate. Furious, the babes leave and vow to teach him a lesson, making them jealous by saying they met men. Men of the male persuasion? <laughs> Which leads him to the abandoned and now trashed Vasquez Lake. More like Vasquez crap hole. There used to be fish here, remember? Needing to drain the lizard, they come across the biodome. Biodome? Do you think it goes both ways? <laughs> I don't know, but we do. Uh, it's weird that there's homoerotic jokes. That was because Stephen Baldwin, he's a staunch Christian arsehole. Because <laughs> I don't think their characters are gay. Like, I don't think they're bi either. No, no, they're just dude bros. They're just having the crack. Yeah, like, yeah. basically cracking a gay joke, really, aren't they? There's a bit of veiled thought, because later on, the girlfriend is slagging off some guys. Like, yeah, later, homo. And then the other one jumps in with sapiens. And she's like, <laughs> oh, you can't. Tap the temple there. Got away Tapping with the it. Temple. Why could they not just pull over and have a piss at the side of the road? Yeah, Percy. Yeah. No window, Stephen. Percy went. <laughs> Why don't you start with the fur on your back, homo? Sapiens. That was good. They're initially stymied by the guard. They threaten a cop with their X-Pac. God damn it. Do the thing where, like, if you don't touch me, you can't get mad, you can't retaliate. And it's like, that would only work with, like, early 90s cops in America. Like, if it was even English bobbies, they'd club you. Lighting some fangs, they create a diversion with a mini explosion and get their whiz on. The door shutting behind them, they're now sealed into the year-long biodome experiment. The dude who bankrolled a hundred million dollar experiment, Leaky, (laughs) fobs it off to the press as simulating chaos theory. It's intended to simulate the chaos theory as we encounter it in nature. I did enjoy that he came up with that on the spot. I was kind of quick thinking. I immediately thought of Deep Space Homer, where NASA added an everyday man into the missions to be more relatable. Yeah. Okay, sure. But the door literally just closed. Could they not have opened it up and say, we'll add one minute to the timer? Mm. And like, they've already brought down the homeostasis to 99.1 and then the next morning it's back to 100, which not have kicked them out. And then it goes back to 100. Yeah. It's so stupid. Yeah. But hey... If they did kick them out, hilarity would not have <laughs> ensued, Jay. Uh, 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 uh. Cause they don't have extra supplies. 
you know, or food or oxygen because it's a self-sustaining area. Ah, terrible. I mean, you know, if you're watching this movie for science, (laughs) (laughs) it's failed massively. Um, But these are kind of basic first draft questions. Absolutely. Also, if you're watching the movie for comedy, also (laughs) fails massively. (laughs) I'm Dr. Noah Faulkner. You may recognize me from my bite on films on television. Um, are you the guy with the spray on hair? <laughs> anyway. Biodome main scientist Dr. Noah Faulkner, a.k.a. William Atherton, a.k.a. Ace Rimmer, <laughs> convinces him to stay. I imagine part of that was the two Beb scientists. Oh, Beb. <laughs> Oceanographer Petra von Kant, Kylie Minogue. I can't believe they didn't make a joke about her name. Kant, yeah. you know. And you're a miracle too, Petrie. That dark. <laughs> and agriculturalist Mimi Simpkins, Dara Tomanovic. She was very hot. Side note, check out Amnesia. She does get them out. Ah. Yeah, putting that out there. Much like she did. Uh, uh, this is Greg's favourite part of the film. The lads trying their pickup lines on them. Sorry, miss. Are you tired? Because you've been running through my mind all day. <laughs> <sighs> like, I'm pretty sure these lines, even in 96, were wildly out of date. Like, did it hurt? Did what hurt? When you fell from heaven. Like, that's the most cliched joke pickup line yeah, ever. Yeah. But maybe that is the joke. It's that yeah. they think they're clever, but... Like, it's so it's, lame that it's no longer lame? Yeah, yeah. No. But I think that's too <laughs> smart for this <laughs> movie. <laughs> did it hurt? Did what hurt? When you fell from heaven, did it hurt? <laughs> Rounding out the cast is geologist Miss Olivia Biggs, uh, Denise Douse, who is in Starship Troopers. And T.C. Romulus, what a name. That's an amazing name. Entomologist Kevin West, who, the both of these do almost nothing. Romulus is a nerd here to be kind of frustrated by the guys because they wreck all of his stuff and all of his bugs go flying. But he comes to love them with a big dead-eyed smile at the end. He goes, ah, it's oh, fucking hell. And he likes, he, now he enjoys sharing his toothbrush. With oh, yeah, knacker. It's fucking gross, mate. So that's it. Our dudes are stuck in the biodome for exactly one year. Day one, in the books. Act two. So the next half hour of the film is making the scientist's life a living hell by partying recklessly and annoying the shit out of them. Oh my god. Okay, any of these jokes do it for you, Steve. The lads sing Iron Man to the tune of Spider-Man. It was okay. I actually did like it. Yeah. Like, Iron Man, Iron Man, does whatever an Iron Man. <laughs> it like, was fucking useless, mate. Iron Man, Iron Man, does whatever an Iron Man. Hold it. That's Spider-Man. Black Sabbath did Iron Man. Sorry. Okay, how about Polly Shore's gimmick that he does yoga and is flexible but gets sciatica and his mate needs to kind of chop him? Is that, is that funny? Nope. <laughs> one of the times does get a laugh out of me because like oh my God, and your man just runs and elbow, elbow drops, drops <laughs> you're yeah. the macho elbow drop love it flashback to them as teens playing smell the fart and guess what I've been eating <laughs> doesn't Cartman have that gimmick in one of the episodes where he can tell what people have been eating only if it's fast food like oh my God, I can see you've had a Whopper meal with <laughs> extra fries. Okay, there you go. I laughed. I can't give out now. Shit. Did you like the dress of the Sex Pistols, Sid Vicious, and Cheech and Chong, uh, Tommy Chong? Eh? Eh? Uh, eh. Not for me. No. 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 Oh, do you like uh, they're in a makeshift hot tub and throwing a wedge of pineapple at the Baldy Square? <laughs> 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 fucking get some. I was like, oh, that's good. He sparks them right between the eyes. Yeah. The newscasters are just outside the biodome. They're asking the douchers for a statement, and Doyle shouts, uh, Hey, Faulkner, quit hogging the KY. <laughs> <laughs> it's like kind of wanking lubricant. Right? So I thought that was actually. F- I'm. I'm I'm cherry picking the funny parts. There's a lot of unfunny jokes in here. Most of it is them going, oh, like, let's have a mini dance. <laughs> mini tribal. <laughs> tribal! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, was that ever funny? No. It's bad. It was never funny. It, uh, the only people who might have found it funny are studio executives who have no respect for the audience. Uh, it's like, stupid teens think this is funny. So they are the Dixie Carter 
and Pauly Shore is the Russo. <laughs> And he just sweet talks them all and has them convinced <laughs> that he's money and he's hilarious. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Mind the Vince wedding. Russo has struck again. So the guys are just wrecking up the place. Uh, don't blame them too much for trying to have a bit of crack. For a self-sustaining quarantine biodome, they haven't included any recreational areas or activities or extra supplies. They have to sleep in a supply closet. They use a mop for a pillow and a trash bag for a blanket. Uh, although later they're able to fashion some business hammocks. Business hammocks. <laughs> I can confirm that they do work. That red shit yeah. is radon barrier. I used to work in a builder's providers and we made hammocks <gasps> so that we could uh, have naps during lunchtime using radon barrier hanging out of racks. And they do work. Fantastic. Can, can confirm, very comfy. So you and Biodom. Me and Biodom. <laughs> He's friends, in a pod. Friends forever. Question, Steve. Uh, an enclosed Biodom, how many trees do you need to equal the CO2 from an adult human? Hmm. In a year, humans breathe about 9.5 tonnes of air, but only 23% of that is oxygen. And we only extract about a third of that from each breath. Matt's Wise works out as seven to eight trees per person. Okay. Not too shabby. Yeah. Of course, hopefully they have like an oxygen recycling system. It's worth noting that kind of 50 to 80% of the Earth's oxygen comes from plankton in the ocean. Nice. There you go. Just thought, there you go. You learned something. You know, you're not going to laugh at this review. But <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Breakfast burrito. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> At their lowest point, stuck in the middle of the biodome, our bras escape through an air vent and happen upon a stash of real food. A barrel of crisps and treats and open a canister of nitrous oxide and chow down and shower themselves with Cheetos. And they have the crack. Mm. I was like, you cunt. It's like there's probably going through a year's worth of food here. A like year's just- worth of junk food in a few minutes. Don't open the whole bag and throw it over your head. You have to have something to come back to. Yeah, yeah. And they were feeding them just, like, bland soy, so I can't really give out to you. Like, you can't live on soy for a year. I just want to end it all. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah? What did you think of the scene where the two lads are sleeping in the utility room, and they get out, and they hop into bed with the girls, and start to, like, hug them and caress them? It's like, this film took a turn. (laughs) You can't get away with that shit. Like, that's a red flag right there. Potential rapists. It's played off as jokey. You know, fun sex romp. Oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the spirit at which it was intended is not rapey, but it's absolutely rapey. But it is. It is, yeah. yeah. Of course, it's all right, because like by the end of the film, they're interested in him, so they don't mind. So that's how they play it off. Think of it as a prank, I guess. The scientists are horrified and kick them out of the Biodome building, but still kind of inside the zone. The lads find the back door, which is just a shitty lock and key for the window. I actually thought that that was one of the funniest parts in this entire movie. Like, it's not a movie to be watched and go, oh, this is hermetically sealed. There would never be a key in a window. And it's like, that's the joke. Mm. One of the few things in this movie that actually worked for me. Excellent. And our dudes escape. But fuck it. Let's round up half the town and have a bitchin' party in the biodome. <laughs> let's go right back in. First you need the planet that's beneath your feet. You couldn't live an instant without that. Did you like that when it flashes to the college where they're giving out the posters for the party, we get to see, which I believe is the first ever on-screen appearance of Tenacious D. Ah, it means I can't fucking hate this film because I love the D. (laughs) You love the D. I love the D. (laughs) Massive (laughs) love for D. It's like, we just want to save some trees. Don't say that we didn't try to save the tree. <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck. God damn it. Yeah. Jack Black, 10 on 10. Yeah. Love that guy. Needed to save some trees. We just want to save some trees. Don't say we didn't save some freaking trees. Ah! Question about this ho- uh, college campus. And it's just like a big ring hippie massage thing. It's like... You don't really care about the environment, is not Well, I'd argue that's most people who are into fighting the system. There's a scene in it where the girls are 
at this party. They're like, oh, these guys don't even care about the earth. And two guys come over and they're so nice. And they're like, can I pick up your cans? Because I want to save the planet. And the girls are like, oh. And they later on admit that they're only like this because they want to sleep with girls. I actually love that um, honesty, brutal honesty. It should be commended because they're having a laugh at the party. They're destroying some flowers and they're like, I thought you cared about the environment. Nah, I just want to get laid. (laughs) He's like, I'd strangle a dolphin to get into her pants. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good line. Uh, Written by someone who hates environmentalists. That's how it is. I thought you cared about the environment. No, we just want to get laid. Well, I'd strangle a dolphin and get into her pants. <laughs> Reminds me of um, South Park, Randy, and there's a whole season with uh, PC culture. Yes. Um, and it turns out PC stands for pussy crushing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just want to bang women. Anyway. Bro, that little kid wrote that our color views and fight for social justice is just a way for us to crush puss. That's not true. Oh, I know, bro. We're being totally victimized. That little fucker did. You asshole. Don't you care about anything? But you're killing the biodome. The babes read the lads the riot act, saying they're destroying the biodome. But, like, these kind of complaints are non-specific, so I'm really suspicious that she doesn't really know anything about the biodome, but just enough to kind of high horse the lads about it. Yeah. Also, they still went to the party. And stayed all night. Yeah, I, I just thought that she was very fake, very annoying on her high horse, looking down on people, despite adding nothing to the causes that she is a champion of. It's a trait in anybody that would piss me off. Mm -hmm. The girls clean up the trash biodome the next morning. They got some plastic bags with them and break up with the lads. Plastic, I hear you say. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) And break up with the lads. Jan? I don't know you. With the experiment failed and the habitat in ruins, Doyle gets a flash of inspiration to keep the originals locked in and clean up the dome and get homeostasis back to 100%. He's like, I never quit anything in my whole life, except Chinese calligraphy, kangaroo anatomy, toe photography, booger sculpture, masturbation. Well, maybe not masturbation, but give me a break. It's the only thing I'm good at. (laughs) You are very good at it, Stub. Very good. (laughs) Ew. How do you know, mate? (laughs) Money man Leaky wants them out. And he's like, oh, do you know what'll drive them out? Safety dance. God and so they it. blast safety dance at them but uh, all the baby faces enjoy it and dance along and there's a shot where there's like a little mini <laughs> at the yeah. top of the conga line here or whatever oh, we can go and we want to night is young and so am I by the way the guys got over being dumped by the girls immediately they don't care <laughs> and good yeah well there's like two other ones that are obviously interested there yeah. so like and they're stuck there with you and they didn't stab you after you jumped into their bed like so. And three, fast forward to the final hours before they're released. So the scientists and the douchers have stayed another year with much much less supplies and a ruined habitat i'm very impressed that they haven't banged either because uh kylie and mimi actually try to get some action from them but they're rebuffed yeah what what the fuck because they want to win back their cunt girlfriends yeah yeah. so the lads have turned baby face not before getting a good squeeze of kylie's arse yeah uh, yes (laughs) yeah (laughs) thumbs up the other guy he was like very much uh flat palming your other one, I was like, man, you're never going to get this chance again, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Acting. Your character will not get this. Your character. <laughs> uh, all this time, Faulkner's, who was the main scientist, who's nowhere to be seen, but he emerges as the final act villain. And he comes out of the water there, mid-2000s, flat-haired Lemmy Beard, Triple H. He's like, yeah, nearly. <laughs> Uh, He's concocted coconut bombs and has planted them along the biodome to rig when the door opens. He didn't just plant them. He got the lads to plant them because they're so stupid that they don't know what they're doing. He was like, oh, no, no, it's uh, pyrotechnics for when the door opens. Hmm. Uh, We'll say the timer of the computer does sync up with the movie. 
uh, this one. So that, that it's a thing. I'm okay with yeah. that. Okay. When the lads realise that the coconuts are explosives, they manage to wrestle the remote from him, but he makes one final lunge and throw, and the coconut explodes! But somehow everyone's fine and they just go, hey. I didn't understand why they had that blow up. It made no sense to me. Like, it was stupid. Maybe if they filled one of the coconuts and rigged it with um, confetti or something and haha, we outsmarted you or something. Yeah. You know, as opposed to just having an explosive coconut and it doesn't have an effect. So, I don't know. The lads make out with their girlfriends again, say goodbye to the Biodome babes and off to the next adventure. How about the bye? You can save the world from your couch. Bye. <laughs> Needing to answer Mother Nature's call, they take a turn into an active sweltering power plant. For a sequel? Oh. No, never happens. <laughs> Curtain down. <laughs> Welcome to the after. <laughs> Steve. Ah, what did you think of Biodome? I just can't say anything other than I really dislike this movie. Don't watch it. It's bad. There's no redeeming features. Okay. Is this the worst movie I've ever seen? No. No. It's still Samurai Cop 2. Oh, wow. It's the worst movie I've ever seen. However, I like to try and judge a movie based on its own merits. And this is a comedy movie. But it didn't make me laugh. It may have made me chuckle once or twice in its 90 minute run time. But for the most part, this was painfully unfunny and the overall emotion that I had watching this was one of anger which is not the feeling <laughs> you should have watching a feel good comedy movie yeah, yeah. that's we we've, we've seen the peak of the early 90s and the trough of the early 90s yeah it's true it's with true the kind of white stoner doucher comedies the gulf between a bill and ted movie and this is For the blanket. To lose the blanket. For fun. <laughs> so Jake, mate, Biodome, what have we done to deserve this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jake tells us, ah, yes, buddy. <laughs> The time has come. Well, I chose this because when I was in high school, me and a group of friends would each pick a bad movie, and every Thursday we'd get together and watch it. I chose Suburban Commando, as I was the wrestling fan of the group, and wanted people to marvel at Baby Taker and Cunt Hogan. A friend of mine picked The Room, as no one had heard of it at the time, it was 2010-ish, and another friend of mine selected Biodome. I'd never seen it, but that may have been because Polly Shore was in it, and I really really fucking hated Polly Shore. <laughs> I couldn't find any redeemable qualities as an actor or a comedian. He was just so annoying with his voices and shit. I couldn't believe how popular he was. We watched the film and the only part I really liked, quite frankly, was the Tenacious D cameo. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough to find someone who's not going to mark out. Mm. Uh, everything... Ook, probably. <laughs> Everything else was insufferable and I was hoping Shore and Baldwin just ended up being stuck in the dome forever. I watched it again after hearing you reviewing it. Perhaps in my older age my tastes could have changed slightly. No. <laughs> Folly Shore is still the most annoying man on the face of the planet and I hope he gets sent off to the sun someday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. Uh, Alright, thank you Jake. Uh, no, actually I don't man, he stole... 90 minutes of my life yeah you know it was actually a bit more than 90 minutes because yeah. you know like I had to pause it every now and again to type up my thoughts so it took like over two hours yeah. and I'm furious with you mate Jake man fuck you man <laughs> Jesus <laughs> oh my god fucking <laughs> shit <laughs> and what's your little name purple sticky punch you're gonna make someone really happy Yes, uh, lazy environmental theme, but it's covered in this 90s dick bag humour. Dear God, it was rough. It wasn't good at the time. Like, you can't say, oh, the 90s, they liked it in the 90s. No, we hated it in the 90s. It came out and it was like, ah, no, 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 no. So Rare to find a film where you actively root against the protagonists. Polly won a Razzie for worst actor in 96 for this movie. I'm so sorry, Steve. 
It had a budget of fifteen million dollars. It brought in. Oh, it definitely lost like eleven. Ah, not too bad. Thirteen point four. Okay. Wow. Oh, you poor people paid to see this movie. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a flop that excludes advertising. So if you include that, it would have needed to clear maybe 23, 24 million. <gasps> Do you know what I mean? Of note, it once had the lowest rating in Metacritic history. Wow. Literally one out of 100 by critics. It's number three now behind Chaos in 2005 and Death of a Nation in 2018. As bad as this movie is, I can't agree with it being 1%. Because it's still a competent film? Yeah. It, at the very least, has a plot that it gets across and has a beginning, middle and end and some kind of character arc. So, you know, I think that's a bit bandwagony people. Oh, yeah, let's give this a zero for the sake of it, you know, mm-hmm. but it's really fucking bad. It's, it's abrasive. Yeah. And obnoxious, you know. Excuse me, miss. If you were yogurt, would you be fruit at the bottom or stirred? Oh, do you want a bit of behind the scenes guy here? Originally, the story was going to be more serious, as in the kind of slackers learning to cope and work with the scientists, but the studio thought it wouldn't sell. So, Polly Shore. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, auditioning for the lead roles, but didn't get it, was Harland Williams, uh, Tom Green's brother in Freddy Got Fingered. <laughs> Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> and Dana Gould, who was not as good as Gould, <laughs> he was a Simpsons writer. From season 13 onwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bit of trivia. The compound is the same set used in Dante Pharmaceuticals in Dead Heat in 1988. Okay. Just um, in general, there are a number of continuity errors. Like at the start when your man gets hit by the book, he's on the ground and his dreads are covering his forehead, but then they look at it and it's brushed away so he can see it. Or like he knocks over shelves and mysteriously they're back up again, that kind of thing. But what do you expect from this film? You know? Come yeah. on. Positives though. Cameos from Rose McGowan, yeah, of Ready to Rumble fame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's probably most famous. Uh, she went out with Marilyn Manson in the like early noughties for a while, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he did well for himself. He sure didn't did. He? Yeah, yeah. And of course, it's the first film to show the D on screen. <laughs> and uh, Kylie Minogue, the mini you here, obviously, uh, she calls this the single biggest mistake of her career and <laughs> said her dad would tease her about it. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. That's fucking funny. Do you want to hear what uh, Stephen Baldwin had to say for himself? Yeah, I bet you this cunt is going to say something positive about it. Oh, uh, I don't think you'll see this coming. Uh, He said, I can honestly say that part of God's plan for my life was for me to ignore the advice of my managers and make a movie that was universally panned by the critics. Yes, God wanted me to star in a film about two brainless slackers who spend their days watching television, making out with their girlfriends and drinking large quantities of various substances. The film was brainless and pointless and hilarious and God wanted me to make it. I didn't think like that at the time. Making Biodome played right into my usual let's have a good time attitude. God had other plans. I just didn't know it at the time. Fuck off, mate. Do you blame God for your shitty movie? You think God cares so much about Stephen Baldwin? <laughs> That he's moving the pawn across the board and placing you into the set of this tripe. <laughs> like, the arrogance to believe that. Who do you think you are? Yeah. The- Billy Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, I just want to make a point. If you really, really want to watch a movie with this kind of theme about idiots, idiocracy is out there. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a really yeah. funny fucking movie. And they have a wrestler for a president. Just go and watch that. Who's the president? Camacho! <laughs> president Camacho! <laughs> it's uh, Terry Crews, right? Yeah, yeah, very good. President Camacho! Hey, like his brother at the time, Alec Ball, Eric Barry. Eric Barry's <laughs> around here. Right? He told him the movie would kill his career. And he was, well, what career? Uh, he had a bit of momentum after doing Usual Suspects. Uh, it also killed director Jason Bloom's career pretty oh, much. Fucking hell. But before Christmas 2013, Stephen Baldwin, he told Man Cow that he's in talks with Polly Shore for a sequel <laughs> involving their character's kids. I mean, 
that's all well and good and all, but uh, it's not up to the two of them to have a movie <laughs> bankrolled and made. So, you know, seven years have passed. Uh, <laughs> we haven't had anything else, right? We just lowered the bar for what qualifies as a movie then. Oh, my God. Biodome didn't do as good as Jury Duty. Even though now, like, it's a big hit. It's a cult, cult hit for me. Mm-hmm. But at the time, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. Then, yeah. And then I got a sitcom on Fox. Paulie Shore. I was telling you, after Encino Man 1992, that was his big break. Uh, he got four big movies out of it, each with a lower box office return. But Biodome wasn't the lowest point in 96. That was the following year's Polly. He got a TV show on Fox. Oh my God. It was shit canned after six episodes. Polly Shore on Fox? It had to happen. <sighs> Clear! <laughs> But he did show up in not one, but two Limp Biscuit music videos. <laughs> yeah. You and Steve just, yeah. He's <laughs> there with a pizza box. Hello, what's going on? Uh, he was also in Futurama. Okay. Mr. Shore, I loved you in Biodome. You sure caused some trouble in that bubble. Rest assured, if it rhymes, I can cause trouble in it. And King of the Hill. Okay. Am I right, I'll rock a doodle. But, I have to say, uh, he did make a biographical mockumentary in 2003 called Polly Shore is Dead, which is much more palatable. Uh, he's way more likable. It's introspective and self-depreciative. And okay. I can actually watch this, mm. you know, without looking like I was just smelling manure <laughs> when I watch it. So anyway, thumbs up. Give that a watch. It's on YouTube. Down Periscope! Oh, Honey, you gotta get in here. You gotta see this shit. This is the worst fucking show I've ever seen. Uh, well, thank you for tuning in, Sting Liz, for this edition of a Nugget You Film Review. <gasps> oh, me meow, Steve. What have we got in the magic bag? What's coming up next? In the sack magic. Oh, me meow. It is 2000's Battle Royale. Battle Royale! <laughs> Yes, yeah, stick with us for the seminal, the extreme Asian cinema classic from 2000, Battle Royale. It's going to be fucking incredible. See you next time for that Naga You review. So it's a goodbye from V1. Take a B. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh,